My name is Oshun Amare. On this channel, we uncover the creepiest, most unusual haunted TikToks the internet has to offer for entertainment purposes. <laughs> Please do me a favor and like, comment, and subscribe to The Soul Trap for your weekly dose of Supernatural coming to you every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursdays. <laughs> Y'all are my Soul Tribe. Tribe is with a Y because the Y is for you because I love you so freaking much. I appreciate y'all as usual. Y'all are my soul tribe. And let me know in the comments, honey, what's your sign? And what is your favorite pastime? That rhymed on an accident. <laughs> Next video. <laughs> Did you know that setting aside as little as $300 from each paycheck into a max funded IUL instead of a 401k can give you $610,000 tax-free money and will provide you with $60,000 a year tax-free in retirement. Comment IUL below if you want more information. If you're open to being a financial professional licensed in your state, please send me an email at essence at tenaciouscashflowacademy.com. So my mom texted me the other day and she asked if I could get mine and my daughter's hair from like our hairbrushes, put it in a baggie and bring it to her house. What are you trying to do now, Michelle? Is my thought, right? And I text her, okay, voodoo head ass bitch. Like, what are you talking about? And she's like, no, no, I need your hair for the garden. My mom's boyfriend is like building a garden for my sister. Who looks like cute, whatever. And I, and I'm like, again, why do you need mine and your granddaughter's hair? Apparently, if you put, like, hair in the garden, it keeps away pesticides. Didn't know that. That's weird. And I said, you got two other kids that live with you in your house. <laughs> she goes, you know neither of them bald-headed bitches have any real hair. Because my sisters wear wigs. You ate with that one, Michelle. You ate. You ate. Let's ensure that you never sleep again. Spooky story time. This one is short, but it's a story that I used to hear when I was a kid. Apparently, this used to happen to people in Haiti. What would you do if you lived alone, you left your house, and when you come back home, you find on your dining room table a fully cooked plate of food that you didn't cook? Story time. Basically, this man used to live with his family, but then, you know, after his misconduct, he got kicked out and he winded up going to live by himself. So he got this little spot, perfect just for him. And keep in mind, this is a Haitian man and a Haitian like old story. So do himself knew about magic, like he knew about voodoo and all that stuff. But every once in a while, you kind of have to let your guard down a little bit and just live. So where he lived, he didn't live very far from his baby mother and like his family and stuff. So one day he gets up, he gets ready, gets dressed and leaves the house and goes to work. And you guessed it, when he left the house, there was nothing in the kitchen, there was nothing cooking, there was nothing. He left the house and he locked the door as you do in Haiti every day. So to his surprise, after a long day of work and he comes back to the house, he says he smells food, but that's really odd. He goes to the kitchen and sitting on top of the kitchen table is a fully cooked, full course meal. The food looked so nicely done. And then on top of that, it was covered as if somebody cooked it and is just saved it for him to get home. Now, this isn't really a time of like telephones in Haiti where you could just pick up your phone and just call whoever. He looked in his kitchen, it's clean. No utensils, pots, pans, anything were used. The sink is dry, nobody tried to wash a dish, nothing. So he opens the food and he's just staring at it. Getting a good whiff and he's like, yo, this thing smells good. And keep in mind, it's after a very long day of work, so this man is hungry. And the more he stares at the food, it's like the more appetizing it becomes. This guy went from where did this food come from to i don't know if i should have this to staring at the food to now the food looking and being irresistible 
So he puts the food away, he closes it, he decides he's not gonna eat it, not today. It was too weird for him. He wraps it up and he throws the food away. And whole night he's thinking, nah, maybe somebody came and dropped the food off for him. Maybe it was like his baby mother. It could have been his mom. So like, he's really tripping. He wakes up the next day, nothing happens. A couple weeks go by, nothing happens. Until it does. Cause two weeks later, he comes back home from work and you guessed it. Another full course meal is waiting for him in the kitchen. Just like the first one, but this time it was a fish dinner. His favorite. At this point, he remembers what happened two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, he didn't want to eat the food because it was a little bit too weird for him, so he wrapped it up and threw it away. Nothing happened. Now he's back home. Two weeks later, there's another plate of food at the table waiting for him. So he decides to open it up. This one is more appetizing than the first time. So he's like, what the fuck? He's staring at the food. The food looks good. It looks appetizing. And he's like, finally... He's gonna give in. It was a long day of work. And at this point, like, like, what's the worst that could happen? He eats the food and he eats every last bite. And it was great. Except the following day, he woke up to something itchy. Like something is just in his ear. And when he goes to scratch his ear, to his surprise, there were worms coming out of them. It was the same case for his nose in his butthole. Live worms started exiting out of this guy's holes. And when he looked down, he was surrounded by worms that people would have to assume only came from inside of him. And no one could help him because it was way too many worms. And the worms ended up feasting on him from the inside out. The end. Thank you guys so much for watching this spooky story. I have so many more coming. I am posting a new spooky story every day on my page. So make sure you come right back for more. Also, I know a lot of you guys wanted to know the story of why my father cannot have kids. You really don't have to wait anymore because the story is up on my YouTube channel. The full story, it is 37 minutes long. So you get the full tea on why my daddy's shooting blanks. And the love or binding spell that kept my mother and my father together. It's all on my YouTube, so you better go check it out. And if you're not following me on Instagram, then clearly you don't fuck with me the way I think you do. So prove me wrong by following me on Instagram. I love you, abducted humans, and I will be back with another spooky story tomorrow. That is so weird. Like, honey, um, what would you do with the mysterious plates? Would you get rid of them? Would you eat it? Um, because it was so appetizing and smelled so delicious and looked so fulfilling. Um, he gave in the second time around and unfortunately was consumed with worms coming out of every orifice of his body. That's terrifying. That is so terrifying. Like, oh my goodness. That's like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Anyway, honey, I was about to say something probably inappropriate, but mm-mm, uh-uh, no. Anyway. The first video, um, no ma'am, uh, mom, you cannot have none of my hair to bury in your garden. You cannot have none of my child's hair to bury in your garden. Make it make sense, cause honey, um, using it as pesticides, never heard of that. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not, I doubt it, but that's weird. No, mm -mm. she was up to some effery and why would you want to do voodoo on your own child? Unless it was for some protection or something, but even if it was for protection, why wouldn't she just say that? So no, it's a no for me. Thank you, hell to the no. Next video. <laughs> do you believe in a, is there a God? How does it work? Yeah, we believe in one God. Okay, so voodoo is monotheistic. That is definitely a big misconception, okay? A lot of people think that we worship hundreds of gods. I've even had people ask me if we worship chickens or goats, okay? <laughs> they ask me crazy stuff like this, okay? Well, in voodoo, you have one God and many different spirits. We call those spirits Orishas or Loas. But we understand the whole time those spirits aren't God. They're more or less like God's helpers or messengers, if you Hey y'all, it's been a minute, but I told y'all I was going to start with new content. So. Yeah, um, she clearly F around and found out. Papa Leg was not to be played with, okay? Um, if you don't know what you're doing anyway, um, he is a deity that clears up the pathway to um, like whatever you may need or want. He is the spirit of the crossroads, crossroads. Um, thresholds of like homes and um, like gathering places and like uh, markets, things like that. Um, he is a Norisha. He is also known as Ishu 
or Legba, um, Legwa, I should say, sorry. And um, yeah, like for a white person, I'm sorry to say it like that, but for a white person to call on him and try to, you know, ask for his help for whatever is diabolical. Um, he is not your ancestor. Um, if you are working with spirits and deities, you should do your research to make sure that they like, you know, have some type of ancestry to you or something because it can be very dangerous. And she found out <laughs> the hard way. But um, it's, you know, um, they talk about Papa Legba in different movies and different shows and things like that. And he is real. Um, he is a part of the Yoruba religion that originates from Nigeria. And he's the messenger of heaven and hell. And you will F around and find out if you, you know, calling upon things that you have no business doing. And then the first clip, honey, um, for those who don't know, Oshun, my name, Oshun Amari, Oshun is an Orisha as well. Um, there are several Orishas. Um, again, it's a part of the Yoruba tribe, Yoruba religion um, from Nigeria. And I am still finding my way within Ifa. And um, yeah, I'm happy. I love what I'm learning over the past four or five years and still continue to learning, still looking for a Bible out that's for me, that's local in Tampa. Anybody that can help with that. And I want to get my leggings and everything like that. So yes, but that's just a little bit more about me. <laughs> Next video. Voodoo spell story time. Let's hop into it. One day my uncle had met this fine woman. So, you know, he had to slide on it, you know, try to get her digits and stuff like that. So they started dating and they was feeling each other. One day she invited him over for dinner and, you know, he went. But while he was in another room watching TV, she was stirring up her favorite dish. A famous spaghetti. But this wasn't just any spaghetti. The sauce had period in it. And she did a ritual slash spell. My uncle not paying attention to the surroundings, he went and ate it. Then they carried on their conversations, watched a little TV, and went to bed that night. He said while he was sleeping, he had these demonic nightmares, but that wasn't just the crazy part. When he woke up in the morning, he stepped foot on the ground. He had a white substance at the bottom of his feet. Come to find out, it was salt, but it wasn't just a pinch of salt. It was a ring of salt around the entire bed. So my uncle shrugged it off and he continued to date the shorty. I don't know why you would shrug this off though. As time passed, he became more and more obsessive about this woman. To the point where he neglected his family, you very seldomly heard from him. He was off the grid, and they dated for years, and she made spaghetti weekly. Well, eventually, the lady ended up going through menopause, and she couldn't make the spaghetti like she used to anymore. So after a while, my uncle became continuously angry, upset, and with her not being able to do the spells that she used to, it would lead to her demise. One day while they was having dinner, he finally snapped. He took a double barrel shotgun, at point blank range to her face and went on to serve a very long prison sentence. See, when you're getting into magic, you need to be careful with what you're doing. If you're going to do it, make sure you know how to do it the correct way if you're going to do it at all. And that's not me saying that you should do it because you shouldn't do it unless you have consent to do it or if someone willingly wants to do it and participate within this ritual. Other than that, if you don't know what you're doing and you're just going into this shit blind and you're just doing shit just to do it, then baby, you better know. It's coming for you. But on the other hand, y'all men, y'all need to watch who be cooking y'all food. Like, be really, really aware and careful. If you do not trust this person, do not let them cook your food. Now, if you're a person that you're with and you love doing magic, you entertain the spiritual side and the ritual side of hoodoo side of life as well, then that's fine. But if this person know, don't know anything about what the fuck you're doing at all and is completely clueless and don't know how to protect themselves or, or, or nothing, then don't do it because it's not going to turn out pretty good for you. Blood magic and anything dealing with personal bodily fluids that contains your essence and DNA and like whole fucking genetic makeup, it's very hard to break those kind of spells. So when I say be careful, be careful because sometimes you might not be able to break it. I want another love spell story because I'm on a roll today. Somebody just submitted this one to me and I, this one is good. I can't believe you guys are this unhinged. Let's get into the story time. 
This one is T. We're gonna call this guy Andre. Andre was the one who submitted this story to me. And Andre's Jamaican. So Andre was in a relationship with this girl and they had a very tumultuous relationship. That means for whatever reason, reason the relationship was always toxic. It seemed like they were always getting together and breaking up, getting together and breaking up. Until one day, Andre was like, I really cannot take this no more. I, I really want out of this relationship. I want nothing to do with this. He said that a couple months went by and one day he just felt the urge to just get back together with the girl. So he did. He said that he would later find out that this girl was into some dark shit unbeknownst to him this girl had other plans she was tired of the back and forth so after they got back together andre said that they always had like a super close best friend relationship where they could tell each other anything so one day as a joke she winds up saying saying something among the lines of you know for a second there i was scared i didn't think my stuff was working i didn't think it worked i didn't think i was gonna get you back so then andre asked her like what do you mean by that and she said as a joke what if i did obia on you and that's why you're here as a joke though they both laughed about it and moved on he also mentioned that upon them getting back together she was really really pushy in terms of he said that he was never the type of dude to run a red light okay but one day during that time of the month for his girl she really wanted to do it and she convinced them and they did it keep in mind that this girl had already met andre's parents and <laughs> andre mentioned that his mother never liked his girlfriend but you know jamaican parents are hard to please one day the mom came up to him and said son i had a dream like i really don't like that girl you know I had a dream that your grandmother came to me and told me that she was working obia on you. Do what you want with that information, but I, I, I don't think you should stay with her. Andre is a spiritual dude. Andre is a spiritual dude, but he's like, obia? Uh, I don't, I don't know. So he decides to go home and he sat his girlfriend down and started by saying, I know what you've been doing to me, just to see if she would say anything. He said that my mother came up to me and said that she had a dream and went on to tell her what the mother's dream was. And he said, well, does that sound familiar? And homegirl would say, okay, so now here's the tea. She said, during one of their back and forth, she said that, well, she read somewhere that blood is a very powerful ingredient to binding. And mirrors are also very powerful magic tools. So she thought, why don't I just combine both? She said that one day, she missed him so much that she wrote his name in in the mirror and she stood in front of it and summoned him she was also saying affirmation like you're obsessed with me you want me you love me you can't leave me alone she said she didn't think it would work because she had only did it once and it took him a while to get to her to get back together with her and she also brought up that time that they did it while she was on her he said he was utterly disgusted that she would even do something like that he said he left he said he did a cleanse on one of the beaches he wore all white and then walked into the water dunked his head to try to cleanse himself and get rid of her energy or her spirit around well he successfully stayed away from her <laughs> but but she on the other hand cannot leave that man alone he says that this girl is literally obsessed with him like showing up to his house obsessed with him get cut out by his family and still comes back because she wants the man that bad she told him that if he doesn't get back together with her that she will unalive herself and she attempted her family found her took her to the hospital and when she came back home from the hospital guess who was the first person she went to go see andre and andre says that it's gotten to the point where she done fought his mama it's gotten to the point where she done fought his mama his sister his cousin she done got jumped and that girl don't care she want that man he says that she doesn't present as a physical threat to him but he's definitely afraid for the ladies around him because she has also showed up to his dates sat on top of his car and refused to get off the car because he was with another woman and um yeah now he's thinking about moving because he cannot get rid of her and the craziest thing is he didn't do nothing she was trying to get him to be obsessed with her but some way somehow i never heard this before but a uno reverse happened and she winded up being the obsessed one golly that was a good one thank you andre i really do wish you the best if you guys wish to submit your stories be sure to submit them at submit at gmail.com and if they're really interesting then i'll tell them 
I have so many more story times available on my YouTube channel, so make sure you guys go on over and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you scroll up to the top of my TikTok page, you see where it says Instagram. If you click on that, both my Instagram link and YouTube link will pop up. Go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and go follow me on Instagram since they are banning this app September 9th, 2024. Thank you, abducted aliens. Please, guys, do better. Damn, Andre. That's crazy. Shorty was definitely tripping. Like, real bad. <laughs> tripping, tripping. I'm happy he got away. Well, sort of. I'm happy he was able to break his um, obsession that he had over her. Um, the curse that she put on him. And I'm happy that it reversed on her dumb ass. And now she became what she wanted him to be. But she's crazy. Shorty getting jumped by the sisters, the auntie, the cousins, everybody. And she's still like, that's my man. Okay? That's the shit Krishan Rock did with Blueface. She wrote his name in blood. But, um, honey, I never done that. I will never do that. But I've done some shit on accident that I didn't know of. And, um, yeah, I the actions that she was, like, popping up on dates and busting up stuff and just doing crazy stuff. That's what I went through with my ex times a thousand. It was real bad. So, uh, yeah. Next video. <laughs> All right, story time. Part one. Here we go. So I became homeless in New Orleans, you hear me? And when I was out there, you know, I was staying in different shelters and stuff. And they was haunted. They had ghosts. I mean, I didn't met witches. I didn't met warlocks. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really serious. This stuff is really real. Don't play with voodoo. You know what I'm saying? But let me tell you something. See, I didn't know nothing about voodoo or none of that. Because I grew up in religion. You know what I'm saying? So I went through a very bad hardship. Well, these things happened in my life. And then it was revealed to me. So something was calling me. You know what I'm saying? Then I started taking a spiritual journey. And then my family went against me because I started tapping into the spiritual realm, meaning gaining my power, you know what I'm saying? So, boom, they set me up, I end up homeless. I'm in the streets of New Orleans, you heard me? Now check this out. I talk different, I walk different, it's because I got spirits in me. Now check this out. So, I'm over there on fucking Canal, I'm over there in the French Quarter, you heard me? And what happened was, I was around the cemetery, okay? They got the voodoo queen, Marie, y'all do research. You know what I'm saying? I start working at this voodoo store. I wasn't really trying to get into no voodoo, but you can't help it when you around it. So it kept calling me. I started hearing voices talking to me. Then boom, I'm on that type of time and now. I wasn't even trying to, but they chose me. You heard me? So now my ranking is so high, I'm the high priestess. You know what I'm saying? See, I used to be around people that was Jehovah Witnesses, but I forgot who I am. I was born uh, in a Baptist church around Masons and Eastern Stars. They did a ritual on me when I was a little girl. I was chosen from long ago. I am a whole deity and an entity. You know what I'm saying? It's my dynasty. I am karma. You know what I'm saying? I'm a goddess. I am the voodoo queen. You know what I'm saying? Everything starts in the south. You heard me? See, let me tell you something. I didn't choose this path. They chose me. My ancestors chose me. So I went through all these spiritual awakenings and these spiritual attacks. And the reason why I be getting attacked like that <clears throat> because these spirits start entering my vessel and now they're using me as a vessel because I have died when I was in New Orleans and they resurrected me, you know what I'm saying? So now I have the power of life and death in my voice. I have a power of God. The same power that God have, I got it too. I'm one of the 144 chosen ones. The 144,000 chosen ones, you know what I'm saying? I'm immortal now. I'm not even regular. I'm not even really like human anymore. I'm a whole spirit in a vessel and I'm being used. So I have a lot of different voices in me and I have a lot of different personalities in me. I have the spirit of Medusa. I have the spirit of Kwama, uh, Jezebel, um, Lilith. All these spirits and entities are inside of me. You know what I'm saying? That's why I can shape shift and become whoever I need to become. But let me tell you something. See, I done been patient. I've been humble. I even have God, Holy Spirit, which is uh, peace and understanding. But let me tell you something. Don't play with the voodoo queen. You heard me? Let me tell y'all. See, I done been out here on my ass. You understand? I done been resurrected from the dead and I'm back now and I'm coming back to collect everything that the enemies took from me. So I just want to let y'all know, be careful because 
my ancestors is moving me now. You know what I'm saying? I see shadows. I have uh, shadow spirits around me. I can't even see them because they're in me and they're around me. So when I come around certain people, they get a little spooked. You know what I'm saying? They feel my energy. I know y'all feel it coming through the video, but that, that's part one of my story time. So stay tuned to the next video. I appreciate her story. I truly, truly appreciate her story. Um, her name is High Priest Tess. Go follow her, honey. Um, I definitely feel where she's coming from. I, too, feel a lot of those things. I do feel that I was chosen for a reason for different things. Um, I feel that I was chosen by spirit. I was chosen by um, God, the one most high universe, as well as my ancestors to do certain things in this world, including this right here right now. Um, I feel that I was chosen to carry out what makes us, us, the essence of us. My name is Essence Amare. <laughs> and um, just to continue learning and practicing um, what I do and what I've learned and what makes me, me, my soul inside and out. So um, it's crazy because I too was raised by Jehovah Witness, around Jehovah Witness. I was baptized in a Baptist church as a teenager while I was pregnant with my child. Um, my like individual story is like crazy, amazing, sad, joyful, um, powerful, um, survivor, <laughs> all kinds of things. So I feel it. I feel that. I love her. I love her. I love her story. Anyway, let me go. <laughs> Next video. <laughs> A lot of people walking around with curses and spells put on them and they don't even know it. Let me give y'all the sauce to figure out if somebody put a curse or a spell on you. Stop thinking that you have to go to somebody for assistance to get a reading done or divination work done just to see if there's a spell or curse on you. You are the tools. You are the key. It's just that they're more tapped in than you are at that moment. But that doesn't mean that you can't do things for yourself. So if everywhere you turn, things are just not going right, you are having issues with your health, out of nowhere like if you just literally feel like something is wrong something is off just go ahead and check to see if there's a spell or curse it does not hurt anything i'd rather know i don't know about y'all so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna get a bowl fill that bowl with water get you two matches it could be the matches that we use those wooden matches just as long as they're two matches put them in the bowl of water do not light them if those matches stay separate, then you good. No spell work has been done against you. But if those matches touch, somebody tried to put a spell or curse on you, but it didn't work because your protection is too strong. But if those matches cross, somebody has definitely put a spell or curse on you. You can also do an egg cleanse. If you haven't heard of that, if you want more information, just let me know and I can drop a video on that. Yes, start doing things for yourself. Stop thinking you have to wait or pay your money or go meet with somebody to tell you about you. Like I told y'all in my Hoodoo video, just find out what resonates with you and your culture and your background and, and participate in that. Because whether people want to admit it or not, spiritual warfare is real. I'm not scared or afraid of anything that I can see. It's the unseen that we should be concerned about. Let me know if y'all have questions and let me know y'all thoughts. Peace, love, and light, and gratitude for watching. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the queen. Yaya underscore 777. Um, go follow her to learn more about how to get cleanses, um, to be able to clean yourself. Um, in case you, you know, you don't know about getting readings or doing divinations or can't afford it. Um, I have not checked out her page. I will be honest, but I will definitely do that. I'm looking for my phone. My phone is right there. <laughs> How many of y'all do that? Oh my goodness. Anyway, I'm definitely going to check out her page. Um, but yeah, just, you know, you can't learn everything from social media either. You should go out and seek a high priestess, a bubble allow someone of um, stature, of high stature who can do cleansing for you, divination for you, um, and different things of that nature uh, to make sure that you get what you need and achieve all greatness, all aspects, spirituality, and yeah, next video. <laughs> Imagine doing a love spell on somebody and then it all comes back to destroy you. 
You see my face? So you know I'm back with another spooky story. Someone submitted this story and told me it was about their cousin. We're gonna call her cousin Linda. So Linda met this guy, we're gonna call him Dodo, at work. Linda went from literally barely caring about being at work until Dodo joined the team. Dodo would bring the sense of excitement to work, while Linda was just looking forward to going to work because at least Dodo was gonna be there. So Linda and Dodo would go on to build this friendship. And they were inseparable. They spent a lot of times together at work and outside of work. So Linda really got to know the ins and outs of Dodo. And when they would spend all these times together, it would get late. And sometimes Linda just wouldn't feel safe to like go home. So she would just stay the night. So while getting to know him, Linda admitted to having feelings for Dodo. But no one knew if Dodo felt the same because Linda decided to not disclose that information. And of course, you know, knowing the ins and outs, she knew that Dodo already had a couple of options anyway. But according to Dodo, those women were just sexual relationships. Fast forward one day, Dodo's grandfather unfortunately abruptly passes away. And to help Dodo get his mind off of things, Linda being the best friend that she was, so to take his mind off things, they decided to go out to a bar. They got drunk and came back home. While they were home and Linda was consoling him one thing led to another and they did the boom 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 now linda anyway so the next day they woke up they didn't really talk about it linda proceeded on being there for dodo throughout his entire grief period and throughout the period of him grieving they did not hook up again however linda's feelings grew one day linda finally said you know what i'm done hiding these feelings so she confesses her feelings to dodo and dodo actually felt the same Dodo actually admitted to being in love with her and he was just scared of ruining their friendship. So they would go on and have like this flirty-esque friendship. They were basically best friends by day and doing the boom 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 making the bed rock by night. Everything was great until Linda was like, when are we going to be together? We've been doing this cute bestie cat and mouse type of game for a while now like was tea. And every single time that conversation would come up, it seems like there was always a blockage on his end. Linda was ready to be a girlfriend, shit. Linda was ready to be a wife today. But there was a blockage for him. So Linda thought since her family is already privy with voodoo, she might as well exercise what she actually knows and just basically give him a little kick to make him see her as, you know, a potential mate. So she did what any reasonable person would do and fed him a voodoo pasta. And that was just step one. Because she likes to go big or go home, she admitted to also giving him a potion. And the man was head over heels. He was so head over heels that he forgot about everybody in his life. That is until his family got involved. His family, knowing that something wasn't right, got involved and decided that they were going to bust him out of this relationship. So, so one day they got him. All that Linda knew was that she came home one day and that this man disappeared for months and she had no idea what happened to him or even where to find him until one day being the desperate girl that she is when suddenly in storms an angry dodo to backtrack when dodo's family got him they uncovered the truth about what his girlfriend was doing to him they took him out of whatever she put him under when he came back to realize as much as he tried to ignore the urge he just had to see her so he would storm to her house kick her door down, notices that she was sitting right there, Linda being excited that he came back, but also automatically noticing that his demeanor was different. He beat Linda so bad that Linda suffered such serious surgeries. She has lost all her teeth, dislocated her jaw, broke a few of her limbs, and he attempted to set her house on fire. She escaped by literally just a hair. One of her neighbors heard the screaming, saw Dodo running out of that house and ran inside to her rescue. Till this day, she has chronic pain and she is still suffering the consequences of that love spell. That was a submission from Jack Mail IT. Maybe hold out before you do that love spell. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this story time and even more of a thank you for a hundred thousand followers. If you ever doubt anything, just know, come here. I love you, my abducted humans. And I ain't never gonna stop loving you, bitch. Anyway, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm on my YouTube Zoom. I have so many stories that are longer than these posted on YouTube. So you better go check them out. And I've officially reached 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you weren't one of the original 10Ks and you've been watching me all this time, I hope you're ashamed. But it's okay because it's never too late to join the train. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Like literally the link is in my bio. What are you doing? Please? All right, au revoir. 
Yes, yes, yes. Go follow that beautiful queen. Her name was Rebecca Journey, but it was spelled weird. But um, yeah, go follow her. I like her story too. <laughs> Next video. <laughs> um, so, so when they told you to reverse it, all she was like saying is like, uh, she was giving you stuff to do. How long it took for you to reverse it though? Because you said you had to go to the river. You had to go to the lake, you said, huh? A river. It was a stream anywhere. But it, it can't be nothing still. Right. It's got to be, be flowing. Moving, moving. Yeah. It's got to be moving. It had to be moving. Mm -hmm. And it had to be going upstream and not coming downstream. But that's where I had to find. You would have been doing some traveling to run across that. But my first day out, after she told me that, I was the first thing I had to cross that river, go to a nursing home. Over on the side, right down, I'm going to tell you where it was. Right down there where we were fishing at, under that bridge. Uh huh. That river. Oh, it's how we were fishing? Yeah. Okay, okay. I pulled that truck off right down there where we parked there and got them jugs and filled them up. Uh huh. And put them in the truck and brought them all back home and start doing what she told me to do. So, what you had to do with the water, though? What you I took the water. The, the first ones, I drained them out after I bathed. But the last one, I had to keep. And then fill that jug back up with that, with that last wash I took. Oh, okay, okay. And bring it back to that river and pour it back in that river. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I've been alert ever since. Right, thing. ever since. Hell ever yeah. Thing. Ever since. I'm thinking all the time, the kindness she was doing to me was because she and my wife were best friends. Never was no friend. Nah, it was just to get close to you. And put that put that shit on you. Yeah. <laughs> Never was my wife just used my wife because they were mentally incapacitated. Right, right. Got you. And she her husband wasn't worth the shit. And my wife had a good husband, a family man. Right, right. And that's what her mama always wanted. Mm. She didn't want her with the guy they call him weed cutter, Wilford. That's who she was married to. Mm. But he was, wasn't about that huh? I ain't done. Mm -hmm. You got to know, each one of these do a certain magic mm -hmm. that produces a certain spirit. Keep uh -huh. out. It's ridiculously easy. So y'all know how I be telling y'all to stop messing with things that y'all don't know about? Scary story time. Hi, it's me again. I got another one. So if you're into stories about shapeshifters and lugawus, this is the story time for you. Now this story is brought to you by my aunt who lives in Haiti, and this is actually her story from childhood. I cannot make this shit up. So according to my aunt, my dad, her, and her brother grew up in this house called Laku Kai Jab, which means the house slash yard of demons. Now, through these voice notes, I just found out I actually had some Lugawus in the family. In Haiti, depending on where you live, you would have to physically leave your house, bring a container, go to a place where there's fresh water, collect water so you can go back home. So that day, my dad, my aunt, my uncle with my grandfather were going to get water. So this person that was walking behind them is, her name is Vaughn. That was my grandmother's cousin. There were always rumors that Vaughn was a Lugau, but my aunt never really saw her do anything suspicious, so until... Now again, I know this is really going to sound unbelievable and schizo. Now, bear with me. This is their aunt. They used to go fetch water together. So why would they have to believe that she's a Luga? Until one day. So all the kids are playing outside in Lakukai Jab. Basically, they look over and they see a walking broom. Now, this is really freaky because brooms don't walk. So they're all watching the broom, extremely confused watching the broom advance towards them and the broom suddenly starts to morph and shapeshift into Vaughn, their aunt, with a package on her head and everything. Now this is really creepy because she's still alive, says my aunt. This is not like this is the dead visiting. This is a walking human. Remember how I said earlier that they were all going to go fetch water. It was my aunt, my dad, my uncle, and my grandfather. And behind them was... Vaughn. Apparently, only my aunt and my uncle were able to see Vaughn behind them. My grandfather did not see her when he turned around, and neither did my dad. Creepy, right? It was definitely more about my aunt Vaughn. That's what 
we refer to her as. Oh, I could also talk about my first ever voodoo ceremony that I witnessed. Anyway, comment and let me know. Hey queens, tired of feeling stuck and overworked? Check out the video on my website and see if digital marketing may be your way out. Hope to hear from you soon.